how does the current government's prevent strategy sit with the Human Rights Act? And then the second part of that question is the media in this country and also some politicians have been conducting themselves and writing and saying things that can be said to be inciting discrimination, especially against or towards people who are from immigrant backgrounds or who are seen perceived to be immigrants. How does that fit with the Human Rights Act and in both cases the prevent as well as the, the institutionalizing xenophobia, what can we do about both? If, if you, one example at the moment actually is France with the attacks in Paris and the reaction of Francois Hollande by creating a state of emergency, banning all demonstrations so that when the climate talks happened in Paris then people were simply not allowed to protest, the only people there uh, being able to lobby them with actually the energy companies themselves when they're talking about global warming actually it's only the oil companies and got a say because they've got the money and it's actually a clamping down on democratic rights the right to protest the right mm -hmm. to assemble now where this comes in with the prevent strategy I think is is uh, blind um, discrimination against minorities again and I don't think it is compatible in the slightest with, with the Human Rights Act because you are demonising a section of the population and actually, ironically, only leading them towards extremism by doing what the government's doing, by bombing Syria and then, at home, blaming them for terrorism as, as a scene. But there was actually a, a Muslim demonstration in London against terrorism just recently that I saw on social media didn't see it. Rep, rep, uh, the Mirror probably ran a, piece, ran a piece on it, actually. Of all the newspapers, I think that's one of the better ones. But you would not see that in any of the other mainstream newspapers in Britain. And so um, there's a huge dichotomy, isn't there, I think, with what, what the government's doing, which is actually supposedly in the name of fighting terrorism, but actually is encouraging it, sadly. And the stream of refugees... Uh, to take up the earlier point as well, Cameron said, I think it was 20,000, did you say? Um, over five years. Over five years, over which is pitiful. Years. You know, there's nothing like... The, the whole nation is being destroyed here. There are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people fleeing their country, and we are taking in a tiny fraction. We're a wealthy country. But I think Germany took that many in in a day. Mm, we, it's absolutely yeah. pitiful. I mean, all I'd say in terms of the prevent strategy, and goes back to what I was saying about... British values. I mean, one of the points raised when I went to that um, training, um, where the poor uh, guy wished that I hadn't turned up in here, <laughs> uh, was um, because once I started asking questions, everyone else did. Um, was that it wasn't? Is that two things? One that they're not. You know, th this whole strategy is called British values, but these are human values. They're not just British values. Um, uh, and so, you know, I, I, I didn't quite like that. And also the fact that this whole strategy was supposed to be an attempt to prevent fundamentalism, and yet the government had decided to refer to these as fundamental British values. Mm. And I thought, hmm, there's a kind of hypocrisy and irony there that even the government is not properly, you know, cognizant of. Um, I think these things are human values, and you know, as I said earlier on, my only my my issue with that whole agenda is that actually um, the government is is trying to create is trying to make sure that children and young people fit their certain worldview of how of how we should grow up instead of having that much broader um, worldview and education and a critical mind and a questioning mind, which I certainly grew up with, and 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 and, and I hope um, other children will do too. So if the government um, goes about talking about the negative side of emigration and plant the seed of everybody in the minority, how do you then uproot this uh, seed they have planted? Because they are the ones who, who start by putting out placards and fans and 
campaigning about migrants and minorities and then they leave it there and then it is left then for the community to solve what mm. the government has planted into the, into the society how will that work how would you clean up that mess without the government cleaning that that's mess the themselves? whole point that is the whole point the government creates an they environment create of that. fear fear and suspicion so that they can step in and more or less put martial law on the streets. It's only a matter of time before the army's on the streets. But, but that was what I was su suggesting <laughs> earlier on about the, the othering, as I call it, um, where, whereas, I don't know if you're here for it, but I was saying that um, uh, to try and prevent the populace, the electorate, wider society, from focusing too much on the actions of the government, and it can be any, it doesn't have to be the present government, but governments, uh, all governments do things wrong, um, what they what they do is, and I think it is a deliberate act. Um, you know, it's not something done by mistake, and it's obviously supported by by the right wing press as well. Is that they focus on um, engendering fear, as you say, engendering uh, worry and concern about that family down the road who doesn't look quite like us and who doesn't sound quite like us. And so instead of, um, and what that does is, it gets people's attention focused on attacking minorities and not being focused on what are our elected politicians doing. Uh, and I think it's a disgraceful uh, way to behave, but it is a way that governments uh, behave, especially if they find themselves in, in trouble. Um, and then, of course, you see the, the rise of, of, of groups, um, and I know you can say that they're not in any way uh, uh, Racist, and I guess I should point that out. But from my perspective, a lot of what they put forward is not exactly inclusive. Let's put it that way. And so you do see, and groups like the B, uh, parties like the BNP and groups like the EDL and, and Britain First, they thrive when our own governments behave in that way. And they shouldn't. But I don't quite know entirely what we do about that, really, beyond campaigning. And you've seen the results in France, as I was saying, with the rise in the, the last National. elections of the Front National, which is a, roughly the equivalent of the BNP here. But attacks seem to happen at very strategic points um, in order for bills to get passed and his armies to be put on the streets. It's a very knee-jerk reaction. And even with ISIL, I would love for them to capture a living member of ISIL to show us what exactly who they are and where they come from. Because they seem to be doing everything in order for governments to be more powerful. So how many of them are Syrian? I'd love to know. Um, it's, <laughs> a, it's divide and rule, isn't it? It's simply ha letting us argue amongst ourselves. It's a very well thought fight amongst plan. ourselves rather than fighting the real enemy. Yeah. We but are going to wind up in about five minutes. Okay. Are there any um, comments that anyone would like to make? Because I'm just going to ask our two speakers to just give an overview, um, a two-minute end to this evening, if there's no additional comments to be made. 